Welcome back everybody, it's 39 Minute Workout with David. Today we're talking about the back pain solution, mainly low back in this workshop. So all this week I'm covering, not only I have two great kettlebell workouts for you, but I'm also covering three of the primary areas people run into pain, and that would be low back, neck, and knee pain. So we're gonna break it down into each one because each one has specific needs and abilities. And I'm gonna help you think through some rehab and prehab, I like to call it, of how to not exacerbate back problems and how not to create back problems, okay? I say this, this lecture, um, probably with the most experience of all of the ones I'm gonna talk about because I had a ton of low back pain, if you've heard my story, from my late teens from uh, a water skiing accident, injury, we call it an accident, I just hurt myself badly water skiing and really just trying to pull up on the thing and my back popped and something hurt and then for the next decade or more, I continue to re-injure my low back. If you have back pain, you know how it feels when you go to pick up a t-shirt and your back seizes up and then for three weeks you're in agony. That was my life through most of my 20s and my early 30s, and then I found kettlebells. And I will say my start with kettlebells was an inauspicious start. It was not very easy at first. I had a trainer who was a little along the lines of, push me really hard, and uh, I had a rocky start. I'm gonna teach you guys how to have a smart, intelligent, safe, but also effective start with kettlebells and how to create a much healthier back or avoid back pain altogether. Now. This doesn't take place of place of seeing a doctor, a PT, or Cairo if you need to, 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 get, to get something checked out. When you have things like radiating pain down your leg, time to get checked out. You know, anything that feels really acute that you are concerned about enough, like should I be working out with this, that's time to refer out, go outside of any instruction you're ever going to get on YouTube, and go find out from the source right from a true medical practitioner. Is this safe? What's going on? Is there any further damage? If you want to know if you have a bulging or slipped disc. Now sometimes they'll even say, you have a bulging disc. It looks like it's been there for a while. I want you to strength train. Bravo, let's do that, okay? Um, I did a talk last week. I'd love you to go back and check it out after this, and where I really talked about reframing pain and fitness because I'm not going to go into a lot right now, but, but there is a lot of really bad information out there with just the pat phrase of, if it hurts, don't do it. And I told people my annoyance with that phrase and why it's really stupid and very, very limiting in terms of, you don't learn anything if, if all you say is, oh, this hurt, I shouldn't lift weights. Um, you never glean any sort of learning from, well, how do I actually improve this? Instead of just going, well, it hurt, bye, I'm not gonna work out anymore. Like, that's not a great solution. I mean, my goal is for you to work out and deal with the problem and fix it and then be able to exercise really effectively. I have taken myself through that and probably hundreds of clients with low back pain and other injuries too, um, and really helped them through what I'm about to teach you. So let's talk about low back pain, okay? Number one, uh, barring a true spine bulging or slip disc, most of the time what we have going on is threefold. We have a very tight thoracic vertebrae, I'll talk about these all in parts. We have a very weak core, and we have overly tight butt, hip flexor, hip muscles all down here. Also, a, a sort of inability to hinge from the hips, which is why we kettlebell swing. So, Let's break them down into parts. Your thoracic vertebrae is everything a rib is attached to. So basically from the base of your neck until about where your kidneys are, from here to here, and they're all the ribs that ribs are in. They're all the vertebrae ribs are attached to. Now we have a problem in our modern culture, and it's not that we lift weights, it's that we don't use our bodies correctly, and we sit down too much. People fear exercise and weights, that that's gonna injure them, and don't blame sitting on our ass for 10, hour, 10 hours a day. We have back problems because we sit in flexion, meaning like this at a desk or a computer, bent over with our back hunched that direction. Now, if you sit like that all day for 10 hours a day and sleep for maybe nine hours a day, guess how inflexible your thoracic vertebrae has become. It gets locked into that position in chronic flexion and you will end up with, you're also gonna hear the same story with upper, upper back, neck, and shoulder injuries in that next workshop. 
you're going to develop long-term problems. The low back, the SI joint, and the cervical vertebrae are the whipping boy for a tight thoracic. So you've got to make your thoracic move. You've got to make it more mobile. All right. How do you do that? Foam rolling, cat cow, thoracic rotations. I put a lot of this stuff in my five minute kettlebell warm up. I would definitely have you go check out that video, plus the stretching video where I talk to you about the right stretches for primarily your hips. That's two of the biggest things you're going to do in terms of fixing your low back pain. But thoracic, basically, if it's locked in this position, what we got to do is teach you all to also go, hey, we're going to also do that position. When I started to put this together, my back pain completely changed, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to get down and do cat-cow a lot, like a lot, a lot. So we're on all fours and I'm going to arch like a cat and tuck my tailbone and breathe out. And then we're going to arch like a cow apparently. And we're going to push, I'm pushing from here, from my chest level, down to the floor, arching and looking up and breathe in. Okay, I would love you to do this a lot. Like, did I say that? Like, oh, three times a day, before every workout, after you wake up, whenever you want to. If you're trying to fix your low back or neck problem, do cat cow. Number two is thoracic rotations. Okay, so we have to be in fetal position with our knees up. We need a 90 degree bend here at my hip. I'm gonna take my top arm and I'm gonna rotate, rotate, rotate. Not my arm, but my shoulder and try to touch the floor with my shoulder while keeping my knees up and flat to the floor. And then I'm gonna return. I'm not gonna twist like it looked like I just did. I'm actually, I'm not gonna force myself to twist. I'm just gonna use my upper body to unravel and then come back to center. Eight to 10 reps on each side is a good number, but both of those drills use over time Thoracic mobility is not a quick fix. It's something that you're going to have to take weeks to months to work on. But you're going to all of a sudden feel like, man, this pain and stiffness I've had through my rib cage, through my back, is starting to limber up. And you're going to stop the whipping boy of the thoracic and stop damaging that low back. Because when this doesn't move like it should, this becomes hypermobile and does move. When you've got a weak core and a tight thoracic, your low back takes the brunt of that power. Of that problem so you go to pick things up and everything's wrong basically let me flash forward to what a good back does a good back does this the core is strong it maintains that proper extension meaning cow position a little bit you know how to hinge from your hips so you're bending using your butt and your hamstring you're picking up your furniture your child your groceries and you're hinging using your hips Okay, so my thoracic is able to arch, my core is able to control my spine, and my hips are able to hinge. That's the sign of a really functional, well-moving back. That's my goal for you. So, number one, fix your thoracic immobility, right? Thoracic rotations, cat-cow, you could do the same thing by laying back on a foam roller, put it between your shoulder blades, cup your head, hands on your ears, like or your head, and arch and arch and arch and just keep working on that thoracic extension. So that's number one. Number two fix, core strength. Now I tend to like the BOSU crunch and the plank as my top two favorites. I do have other kettlebell core drills. I want you to go back and look at my core drills and go on the one that's sort of the body weight core drills and do them and do them and do them. Kettlebell swings and, and plank, if you had a, di a steady diet of kettlebell swings and plank, in a month, if you do the warm up and the cool down and kettlebell swings and plank for your workout, you'd be well on your way to creating a really, really great safe back, okay? So strengthen your core. Give me good planks. I would rather 10 to 15 seconds of a good plank than 30 seconds of an ass up in the air plank. That's not a plank, okay? So in a plank position, I want my hands clasped, I want my butt tight, and I want my, if my hips are up, I'm now not working my abs. If I droop my belly, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'm not gonna hold that for long. If I droop my belly, I'm taking my lumbar spine and I'm going crunch and pushing them together. And they say, ouch, I don't like that. So I'm working on that nice tight palms together, squeeze them, everything's a straight line from your ankles to your head. 
I would rather you start with 15 good seconds of clench tight plank, build up to 45 or 60 seconds, than I would 30 seconds ass up in the air, not using your abs, no progress, but you're like, oh, I did a 30 second plank, good boy. That's not gonna make you stronger, okay? So good planks, hips down, everything's locked, core's working hard. You'll build up very, very quickly if you do them right, okay? The second drill, the Bosu Crunch, I'm not gonna show it today. The Bosu Crunch I love because your arms are up and unlike the old gym crunches we did, where your feet are supported and you're pulling, really using your hip flexors, muscles in your upper thigh, uh, and strengthening them. With the Bosu Crunch, you're gonna sit back on that Bosu up in a, a, a position, 45 degree angle, hands up over your head, and you're gonna force your abs to do all the work. The combo of that and the plank is gonna rebuild your core for you, which is number two fix. Number three fix, okay, we have thoracic mobility, we wanna make the thoracic move. Core, we wanna make core strong so the low spine doesn't move. When the core is strong, the low spine says, hey, I'm really stable, I'm happy. When the core is weak, the lum lumbar goes, oh crap, I'm in trouble, I'm waving. I go to pick something up, oh, I can't control it. Number three, we gotta make the hips stronger, okay? So number three, we're gonna work on the hip hinge. Most people I know who go to the gym who don't do kettlebells, they do presses, they do rows, they do abs, and they do squats. But they do not hip hinge, all right? Now the deadlift is one of the best exercises there is, but I find in training clients from the 30s to their 60s that the deadlift is a hard move to teach, I probably have to do it one-on-one, -on -one, not by YouTube. It's very easy to screw it up, and when it's done wrong, it is dangerous. The kettlebell swing, however, I've taught thousands of people, and I find it very functional for all ages, all abilities, and it is phenomenal at rebuilding the core. So, and the butt, and teaching you how to move from your hips. The whole thing of the kettlebell swing, right? Hinge and snap, hinge and snap. I mean, this is really great stuff for fixing that low back. Because what you're doing is you are hinging at the hips, making your hamstring and your butt elongate, and then snap. It's doing all the power. All your core is doing is controlling your spine, and all your arms are doing is holding on for the ride. Your butt is learning how to strengthen and how to move correctly. I see this in dudes even more than women, to be honest. Guys don't know how to move from their hips, and so they garden or they pick up stuff and they fold at their back and they pick things up with their lumbar. Your back is screwed if you're picking up a teacher, a child, or a 50 pound kettlebell. I don't care how much it weighs, your back is screwed if you hinge it at the spine. We've got to learn how to hinge at the hips. Go back to my kettlebell swing workout, get yourself a light you know, swing weight, learn how to do it correctly and then get strong with it. Okay, so number three, learn how to hinge the hips. Fold at the hips. Look at my spine, folks, that's cow position, right? Everything in kettlebells and in exercise and in Berkshire picking up and, and it's not a word, it's testing you, is in cow position, right? Cat position, death of the spine, cow position, healthy spine, okay? Loosen the thoracic, tighten the core, hinge the hips. That's your back pain solution. I hope you enjoyed it, okay? Let's talk about a couple more things. If you know kettlebells, this is for you, okay? If you know kettlebells and you are brand new and you're having back problems prior or you have a flare up or something shows up, most of the times people say my back hurts, they're really talking about here, okay? Here's my belt line. They're talking about from the, the center out radiating around, out around the butt and the hip. So what we got is a butt problem, not a back problem, but it feels like your back. And the problem with the back is if I tweak my bicep, it'll hurt and maybe the bicep will hurt if I curl it or do a pull up. But when you get a knot, let's say up in your upper back, like right around your belt line, your back is like your brain. Your spine's very, very important to you. And so when you have one little knot of a problem, that pain goes and it, and all of a sudden this one little spot might be the problem, but all of a sudden everything from here to here goes clench. Well, it's not stupid, it's actually doing something smart for you. It's trying to save you from blowing your spine out. What's happened here is that your back goes, oh shit, I didn't like that, and it goes clamp. And so it creates all of this pain and immobility. That's when you really need to, to pull back from working out, walk, maybe see your PT, chiropractor, doctor, acupuncturist, whatever, right? Foam roll, bit, take warm, Epsom salt, bath, all that kind of stuff. But when you start feeling like, okay, it's not tweaked now, it's just sore or tight, that's when we get back to our workouts 
Now, what's the strategy? I don't like with kettlebell clients when they've had 10, 15 years of back pain and I'm sort of working with them, like let's do this safely, smoke, slowly, intelligently. I only like the two hand swing, the beginner two hand swing. The reason being, both sides are working at the same level. The second you go to a one hand swing or a snatch or anything on one side, you've got diagonal stabilization happening. So I'm coming down here and this cheek's firing more in the court, right? Everything's fighting trying to not let me turn and rotate. So great stuff when your back is healthy, bad stuff when you're coming off of an injury or you're walking the edge of this sort of locked up hip. I don't like doing the one hand itself. And I'm talking one hand swings, I'm talking my one handed row, which if you know me, it's the staple of our workout. I'm talking anything one-sided, even lunges one-sided, I don't like. So when you're having a problem point, if you're okay to work out, typical goblet squat, right? One bell in the middle, squatting. Typical two-hand swings, right? Why? Because they're bilateral movements. Both sides are moving the exact same, safe. One side moving, I don't like it. Too much stabilizing on one side and then the other. Do the goblet, do the swing, do your press it, right? Bilateral stuff, do your core work, but stay away from one handed stuff until it starts to get to the point where you're like, I don't really feel it anymore, I'm good. Cool, now move back and build that stuff again. The long term of taking your back from screwed and a decade of pain and problems to gloriously awesome, I'm so strong, I can't believe how well I move at my age, dot, dot, dot. We do have to integrate all those movements. Two hand movements, one hand movements, switching hand movements, right? By, right? All this stuff where we're working, because great, 50s, 60s, if you're in your 50s, 60s, one of the most important things you have to build, what is it? Balance, 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 balance. And balance is built by unstable movements. That's why you'll see me do things like a suitcase lunge, where you hold a bell on one side and do lunges on one side because we're stabilizing, we're developing good balance. So long term, yes. Short term in the immediate until we've gotten out of that pain state, no. Simple bilateral movements, okay? Um, and I think I really said, so and then the last piece is with the swing. I sort of talk about it in my swing workout and then my top five kettlebell swing mistakes, but there's a problem with those of you who come to me with back pain, and that is this. When I teach the swing, I stress that you've got to get your hands what are the two things I always say? Hands high in the crotch, right? Not here, not ever down below the knees, hands high in the crotch, because that keeps it really anchored to my torso. And number two is my chest is to the floor. When people come to me with back pain, a lot of times what they want to do is they want to shorten the motion and stop here. The problem, and it seems, oh David, it's safer because I'm stopping short. No. You've got two ways to slow the momentum of this kettlebell. You can use your hamstrings or you can use your low back. Which one's the right answer? Your call. Hamstrings, good answer. You do not want to take a lump of steel, chuck it between your legs and use your low back for the break. This is my objection with the CrossFit swing. They come too short, they squat, they don't ever get their ass back far enough and they're not using their hamstrings enough. You can disagree with me, but we'll talk about that later. So, you've got to push your chest to the floor. If I stop short, too much of the brunt is going to go to my back. I want you to go push your butt back and your chest to the floor. Do that position with me. Really take your sternum, shove it through your knees. Where do you feel it? Right here in my hamstrings. They just got stretched. Perfect. That's what I want you to do. So the inclination is to shorten the swing. Oh, I'm going to be safe on my shorten. No. Opposite. Chest. Push it through your knees. Feel it in your hamstrings. That's where you want your kettlebell swing. That is going to help you swing correctly, safely, and put all the stress in your legs. Your legs are going to get crazy strong. When you get a loose thoracic vertebrae, not loose, but you know, mobile, strong core and strong butt and know how to hinge from the hips, you are well on your way to having a great back. And now we can reshape the body, we can burn fat, we can look awesome, okay? The last piece is just a reiteration of it is time to refer out and check with doctor, chiropractor, PT, acupuncturist, whatever you work with, when something feels concerning and out of your reach, like, damn, this concerns me, I don't know what to do, should I work out or not? That is no longer time to follow people on YouTube, that's time to go get a practitioner, okay? 
everybody hits that time where it's like they have a question. Be smart, take care of yourself. Get somebody who's an expert on your team, right? Your little health team. I could be part of that, but it needs to be an expert who can check out, evaluate you, look at what's going on and make sure it's safe, okay? So always be smart. You know, the best goal is use those guys to get you back to where you can work out and then use me to get strong and fit, all right? So thanks so much for watching. I hope you can enjoy my kettlebell workouts from home. Go get yourself a couple of bells. It's such a great workout for all ages. I really love working with men and women from their 30s to their 60s. And uh, if you would like to check out my program, it's at onlinekettlebells.com. I give you all of the health tattoos. I teach you how to do this. I go through rehab techniques. I go through short workouts, 39 minute workouts. It's great fun. I'll give you some support and accountability to really help you make huge changes in your life. So thanks so much, I'll see you next time.